Welcome to this video about real camera system in iClone 7. Before we begin, let's talk about real world cameras and how they operate, along with industry standard terminologies. Typically, a camera is composed of two main components, that is the lens and the camera body. More specifically, we are concerned with the dimensions of the sensor plate, or the film of the camera body also called the film back. The distance between the film back and the lens is called the focal length. The combination of the film back and the focal length determines the angle of view. And the viewing area created by the angle of view is called the field of view. Photons coming through a camera are flipped and then reflipped to align with what we perceive with our eyes, which is a process that is not required for computer generated images. So, what would happen if we were to increase the focal length by zooming in with the lens? Well, the angle of view would narrow and the field of view would shrink thus giving us a close-up image of the same car. The same would happen if we were to shrink the film back but left the lens and focal length alone. On top of all the real-world camera settings, there's another layer of render settings that is relevant to 3D graphics. And that is the output size, also known as the render resolution. You can set the output size in iClone by opening either Render Image or Render Video under the Render menu and tweaking the frame size or input your own custom output size in the form of horizontal and vertical pixel counts. Once that is done, go to Edit Preference and enable Show Camera Ratio in order to display the film gate. As you can see, the film gate padding shows up as semi-transparent gray regions. Let's take a look at the following diagrams to understand the relationship between the output size and the camera ratio. The output size is the final resolution of the image or video exported from iClone. The output size and camera ratio do not necessarily match, unless their ratios are the same. Just pick the camera you want to simulate, pick the resolution according to your display device, and let iClone handle the rest. Camera ratio that extends beyond the boundaries of the output size are simply cropped out. Camera ratio that is smaller than the output size becomes the padding for the film gate. Whether the frame is cropped or padded depends on the dimensions of the output size and the camera ratio together with the type of fitting for the render region. Imagine that we have an output size shown here as the rendered image. Then we overlay the camera ratio on top of it, set to vertical fit. What happens is that the padding appears on the sides of the frame because the camera ratio width is narrower than the output size. Now take the same scenario but use horizontal fit. And instead of padding, we get areas that are extended beyond the frame, which are simply cropped out and discarded upon rendering. Imagine that the camera ratio is wider than the ratio of the output size, and the result is that areas top and bottom are padded by the film gate. Changing to a vertical fit, the wider camera ratio extends over the sides of the frame and is also cropped out. While most software tend to ignore film gate, iClone does render it for the purpose of pre-visualizing real-world cameras. Now let's see everything in practice with iClone. But first, I'll need to create a new camera. Simply perform Create Camera from the main menu, and you'll notice that we are viewing from the new camera. Any new camera will inherit settings from the one prior to it. Let's also give it a handy name. Now that's done, let's take a look at the new camera settings available for iClone 7. As previously mentioned, we have the fit render region that determines how the camera ratio is to be fitted for the output size. The industry standard is horizontal fit, which is the same for iClone 7, but not for iClone 6. The fit FOV in this case is how the field of view is mapped to the camera ratio. For iClone 7, fit FOV is set to horizontal by default. The vertical option for fit render region and fit FOV are made available for backwards compatibility. However, you will do just fine by leaving these settings in horizontal, unless you are working with project files from iClone 6 or prior versions. Next up, there are two rows of buttons to quickly switch out the lens for the ideal focal length. Notice that the angle view is also changing. This is because it reacts to changes in either the focal length or film back. You can also directly pull on the focal length slider to change the angle view. And the opposite is also true when I pull on the angle view slider. Notice that the film back does not budge. 
This is because during a usual video production, the lens is adjusted or switched out instead of the camera body. However, we do have a few popular options for the camera body via the film back setting, such as the 35mm Academy as the conventional motion pictures format. Various makes and models from vendors such as Canon and Sony and the 70mm projection for still and motion picture photography. The camera aperture can be denominated a metric or imperial unit system according to what you're comfortable with. This is just a calculation aid and does not impact any camera settings. You can also create your own custom film bag by inputting the width and height values for the camera aperture. or by changing the film aspect ratio, which is equivalent to changing the width in accordance with the height value for the camera aperture. At any moment, you can pick the standard film back with this convenient drop-down menu. If you like the current camera settings and would like to preserve it as a template, you first need to select the camera, go to Content, Stage, Custom, Camera to focus on the correct asset category, and hit the plus button to save it. Give it an appropriate name, and now you can double click on the camera in the Content Manager at any time to load it into the project. To export the camera, simply select it and go to the menu bar and perform Export, Export FVX. iClone provides various presets for your target application. For example, I'll be using Maya to load the camera, so I picked the relevant option here. The camera FVX file can also include animation data. Let's hop over into Maya where I have the equivalent scene already set up. Now I'll just load the camera FVX file, and it should have the same settings and animations as the one in iClone. You may want to export the scene and camera data from iClone to take advantage of third-party rendering solutions, such as Mental Ray or V-Ray. Or if you're collaborating with other artists and you would like to unify your 3D workflow. As you can see, the angle of the camera matches the one in iClone perfectly. And when I enable the Film Gate option, it should be clear to us that the various camera settings also carry over from iClone. So that concludes this video about the real camera system in iClone 7. You have learned about the fundamentals of real-world cameras and how to operate them inside iClone, as well as exporting and importing them into your choice application. Thanks for watching and please check out more tutorial videos in the Learning Center.